Well, you guys have been very patient waiting for the next coaster in Beachy Point, so it seems only fair that I oblige. And you can probably tell this one is, should we say, flawless? Get it? Because there's no floor? I'm wasted here. Hi, yes, welcome back to Planet Coaster, welcome back to Beachy Point, and more importantly, welcome back to the roller coasters to the channel, and this is this week's beauty, and I can't wait to show you around. But just in case you are coming here for the first time, welcome aboard, by the way, thanks for coming. This is the fun we've had so far, this is Beachy Point, it's a seaside park, and uh, play base loosely on Blackpool Pleasure Beach and we're about to add in a major coaster and it's a flawless coaster and this is actually my first flawless coaster I have done on the channel if you don't count the reel up my ride one so there you go I can't wait for you to pick this one apart <laughs> <laughs> so, we've got the station, and we've got the lift hill at 30 degrees. It's a pretty typical setup. And then you have the first swooping drop down this way. It's a long, drawn-out uh, affair up here, because I needed to create a space for the turnaround here. So, that's why it sort of wraps around itself. And I know this is going to need a bit of custom supporting and stuff, so uh, that's what we've got. We come into the vertical loop, then, as the train goes round, and into the Immelman there. And then we come into a lovely turnaround here. There you go. There's the lovely turnaround. That's just so B&M. Uh, and then into the 0G roll. And that's pretty much your 1-2 combination. 1-2-3 one, one, combination, right? Vertical loop. In moment, and then the 0G roll. And then we come into a turn around here. I wanted this to be similar to Hydra at Dorney Park. But actually it didn't work here. So I've made it a bit more drawn out. And it cuts around this way. Into an ejector airtime hill. Yes, they exist. Uh, and then into another turn around. Into a final airtime hill. And then into the break run. Where I'm sure this one doesn't have a jolt. I'm just saying. <laughs> so the <laughs> influence on this one. Uh, oh, shots fired. Influence on this one is definitely Hydra at Dorney Park meets the Tivoli Gardens one meets Hair Razor over in Happy Valley. So that's what we're going for here. And talking of which, uh, with the Hair Razor, not Hair Razor, sorry, the other one, uh, Hydra, that's the perfect station to use in this one. So I am actually going to do something that's very, very similar to uh, Hydra's station here for reasons that we'll talk about in the next update, which is coming... Now, well, that went quickly, didn't it? I mean, lots of change, so much to show you. The buildings have appeared, and rides have appeared, and landscaping has appeared, and all sorts. I mean, don't even know where to begin, but probably where we left off, right? We were talking about why the Hydra building is perfect for this spot. So if you imagine that we are pretty close to the coast here, I mean, let's forgive the fact we've got hills and whatever, this would be just exposed sea. And if it's anything like Brighton, it's constantly windy. And I don't mean like gusty, I mean it's a constant wind that blows for hours on end until the tide turns so for that reason you are definitely going to need some kind of aerodynamic building and this is why the hydra building is perfect for this uh, this isn't an exact copy i didn't want it to be a proper curve i wanted it to be a little bit like the lorries you see on the uk roads where they are all aerodynamic and that's because you have all of this wind coming off of the sea and it's going to be hitting this building pretty much side on so what you want to do is just enable the wind to go up and over the roof slightly so you've got a pitch here and the wind would then uh, get picked up by this little ridge here and then up and over the top of the building and it gets dispersed by here so by the time it gets to here it's actually relatively sparse and you're not going to be damaged the rest of the building uh, damaging the rest of the building and then of course with the pitch here will help with the rain so the rain's going to run off here it will run onto this roof uh, which is also a pitch and it comes down here and can be dispersed and likewise here the rain would come off here and then down into the queue lining make you wet <laughs> so there is a little bit of science and a bit of logic behind the building that I've chosen uh, that I've chosen here the same applies by the way to the supports and I've taken quite a lot uh, quite a lot of inspiration from hair rain a happy valley for this one because that's got some real funky supports but it's on the side of a mountain so of course it's going to get windy it's in a really small space so they had to be really creative with supports and there's some of these ones here like this one here and this one here absolute genius of a support but the idea being you don't want to use too many supports in this area because it just creates a wall for the wind to hit you want the wind to come through the supports so you kind of limit the number of supports but you have to use a clever supporting uh, structure so that's what i've done it's not completely custom supported. There are some in-game ones in here that are, that are still fine, but it, it all works. And like this bit here, I wasn't sure if it was going to work. I knew that it was going to start to encroach into the maintenance area and stuff, but uh, you know what? It does. I managed to put the supports in, and it's all right. You don't need to cover off or anything because the rides the ride wouldn't be operational by the time this is uh, by the time you're working the mechanisms for the 
transfer track and stuff. So it's all good. It's it's all fine. I've um, started to kit out all of the queues and stuff with its with its fencing and all of the usual things you find. Remember, the park is not themed. It's stylized. So that's what we're going for here. We're back to the stylization uh, stylization thing. But I've got all the don't die fencing and stuff all up, and I've just put a little bit of style around here. I actually didn't want this to be the generic fencing on the outskirts. I did want this to be the blue fencing because I then go on to use it in the station here and it just gives a consistency to design that's uh, that's what that's all you're doing and then I just put a rim along the outside here and then I just put white blocks I uh, completely forgot actually that you could recolor the castle brickwork and now that I've remembered that you can do that that's my new favorite thing because <laughs> it's an alternative to brick and I love it talking to brick uh, we're using brick on the floor and I want that pink uh, brickwork you know the herringbone brick that we get in the UK that's what I want here it feels like this uh, coaster would probably have been have put in late 90s, early 2000s, so it needs to feel like it needs to feel like that. The photo unit, then, it's gross, but I love it. Um, trying something new here, actually, with the uh, with the desks. Uh, it's still desk B, but I just put it on an angle just to give it a little bit of variation. And then inside, it's just your usual usual photo unit. But of course, because we're talking late 90s, early 2000s, neon is all over it. Um, I do need to point out that this photo uh, thing doesn't have a, a perfect central place because when I put it central to the window, it was off center here and it looks silly. And now it's center to the building and it's off center to the window and it looks silly. So I, I'm kind of like snookered my self with the sign <laughs> not even sorry uh, so yeah the landscaping and stuff around here has all been done and you'll spot something new in the middle what's all this about oh I've just realized I put that the wrong way around what's all this about well Blackpool of course is a bit of a mismatch of, of rides now people say oh it's such an amazing place where you've got coasters overlapping each other and this and the other that's not actually that true there's only a couple of places where that is if you have a look at google earth from the top down all of the coasters do still have their own ride areas there's only a couple of instances where it's actually true that they are a bit of a spaghetti and that's around the um uh not grand national the other one oh i can't remember it's gone and icon and of course the big one so oh steeplechase steeplechase um and the big one and icon where that's all like around each other but actually if you look from google earth all of the rest of the coasters are pretty much segregated from each other but there are a couple of instances where you have a couple of track rides that just weave through it and that's what i'm doing here i'm just weaving a car ride through here uh it's very much grand prix uh we are lots sort of like loving the idea i don't want it to be to the scale of grand prix but i did just want it to be a little bit fun so that's what we've got um, i'm not going to get this done this this episode i'm not even planning to come around this way because uh, i've got plans and stuff for for this area so what i am going to do though is the ride area as it interacts with the um uh, with the flawless here i kind of wanted to have the feeling that the flawless was put in around this car ride so that's kind of why it's uh, living like that bit of water here that's a, bit, a little bit dangerous because we're a bit close to the sea but it's doable it's it's fine so let's talk about the other stuff that's starting to appear i'm starting to get a feel for this area i'm starting to get a feel for how the path is going to uh, interact with each other and it's going to transition from one to another to another uh, and i've just got a couple of bits of open spaces that i want to fill out but yes there is a new building it's going to be a more restauranty type thing think of the, like the burger king building at blackpool that's kind of what i'm going for here i wanted it to be a bit of a rounded edge uh at building here but then i thought hey this would probably have a really nasty overhang so that's what we've got here a really geometric nasty overhang that probably would have been put in in the 90s early 2000s when it was cool to do this kind of shape <laughs> it was cool back then actually was it cool back then it probably wasn't uh, but we look back on it now and go oh some geometric shapes <laughs> so that's what we're going for in here but of course it's going to be functional as a restaurant i just need to do all the decorating and stuff uh, inside and then because uh this restaurant needed to be facing one way i thought well what can i put on the back and of course it's an arcade where else would it be 
because <laughs> we're monetizing as much of the area as we can. And again, this whole idea of the early 2000s and all the, the inverted commas, modern buildings, such shapes that we were putting in, it's going to have a pitched roof, isn't it? Of course it is. Uh, so there you go. There's the pitched roof. I just need to make it all make sense. I'm just throwing this down for now just to give a bit of a, an idea. I did also want a bit of a plaza area in front of the queue line so that uh, it's sort of like got a throughput to the area there's gonna be a fountain here I think I think I might want to trigger up something in the fountain to go off as the train goes past I think that would be quite cool and the thing, final thing that I've added is just a, an insanity ride there was this really awkward gap here and I was like well I don't really want to fill it with another building and another shop that's probably what Blackpool would have done and I thought mm, have I got a ride small enough to fit in here and I don't want to drop drop tower because that's coming later on elsewhere so the only other ride really was the Lupo plane or um, something along those lines and I was like no that's too small for this area so I actually put the insanity in and I quite like it there uh, it's garish colors it looks awful uh, but what I have done is I started to play with the pad so this of course is going to be flower beds uh, and stuff and this is also going to be I think actually this side might be a hedge might put a hedge in there instead but I didn't want it to be a big square flat thing I wanted it to have a little bit of personality to it so it's going to be a flower bed and stuff that's going to uh, that's going to go in there and there you go guys that is how it's looking right now I'm liking how this is coming on I actually think I should probably just get on and finish it really see you in a minute well, this turned out all right, didn't it? I'm pretty chuffed with this one this week. I mean, it's come together quite nicely. And I lied, by the way. This isn't the first Flawless Coaster on the channel. That's actually the ChatGPT video that nobody bothered to watch. So there you go. Sorry, it's only taken me three days to realise. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got a flawless coaster in Beachy Point and look how it sits on the sight line. It's just, it's perfect for what I wanted in this space. I absolutely love it. I don't even know where to start showing you around because I did start to do lots of stuff on the outside. There's things that I've hidden and whatever. So members, you guys will be able to see what I've been working on. Um, but it's all there. So let's start down here with the station, I guess, because that's where we left it off, right? And I know I was talking a big game about the whole idea of the wind and whatever, but I didn't mention that it was actually also based on, uh, based on waves. So that's what I've done here, you know, this idea of it being a sheer piece of water and the waves coming over. So uh, you can see it better now that the roof and stuff is on and I love it. Yes, I absolutely love it. I've actually decided to put solar panels and stuff on the roof here, by the way. This is something that I've only recently started to consider. Where would the park want to try and save money? And that's, you know, on the roof and, and whatever way, where you possibly can. So, yeah. Maintenance area then is all done. Uh, it's all just cluttered out and stuff. I don't want this to be any more than this, but I'm, yeah... I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with this. And then out the back here, I don't know if this was in in the last uh, in the last bit. I think I put it in this this update. I've just put a bit of a, a an electric maintenance area and stuff just just inside here. It being close to sea, it's all fine. Would it be undercover? Possibly, but does it need to be? No. Generators are pretty much pretty much waterproof nowadays, so you're all uh, you're all good to go. Inside the station, then uh, this is what I've done inside here, and just all the kitting out. I mean, I started it in the previous update, but I've just done a lot of touching up work in here. You know, concrete's gone down, and signs have gone up, and the baggage hold is now deliberately bad. Um, I wanted this to be a really bad baggage design, as in you've got to cross the train to put your bags in, and then you board the train, and then you have to cross again to get your bags out, and you leave, right? So I wanted that. That's that's kind of that's kind of deliberate. Uh, and then we've also just got the row numbers and stuff in here. That's all cool. That's all sorted. And then you've just got lighting and whatever that, that goes off and whatever. I don't tend to do control cabins because you can't control where the cabins are. If we could, then I'd, I'd make more of an effort to do control cabins and whatever. So for now, it's just open and it's uh, it's all done. But this photo unit, I love how this photo unit sits. It's just it's just there and it just sits slightly set back, but it's just so clean and it's so lovely. Like yes, inside here, I've done a, a bit of touching up and a bit of work on it, but there's some still there's still some stuff I want to do in there. But uh, I'm going to come back to that later on because you know. It's time to call it for this for this episode. But yeah, I love how it how it looks. And I also love, by the way, that this whole wave idea is now extenuated by the fact that you've just got two roofs and it looks like waves ro rolling up on shore and stuff. So uh, yeah, that's kind of like a. I'm gonna pat myself on the back for that. I like I love it. And the views that you get of the coaster from the uh, from the ground here are immense. Like this first drop that you've got and the loop, the uh, the Immelman that you've got, the zero G and stuff. It's just. Yes, and I didn't realise, by the way, that this is actually a lovely profiled 
thing. Like, when it rides it, it rides it really well. And that's what she said. Uh, so, yeah, I, I dig it. The queue line then, of course, has all been kitted out with all the usual stuff. This is the pink brick that I wanted to use down here. And then just the generic fencing and stuff. Uh, all the don't die signs are now all up. And that's all good to go. So if we come over to this way, you'll see that we've got a lot of foliage going on in the centre. I didn't want it to be overgrown, but I didn't want it to be brand new. So I wanted there to be growth. And this was, again, just to take an inspiration from Blackpool. Like the the areas... Uh, <laughs> can you hear my chat? Uh, the areas that you've got uh, inside the ride areas and whatever are all quite, like... They're well kept. They're groomed, but they're not, you know, pristine and stuff. So that's what I wanted to go for here. But the actual car ride itself, I've actually decided to not theme this yet. Uh, I want to do that when I actually do the car ride because it, it's a job in itself. I did start to lightly theme it and uh, yeah, so this is what I've done. A couple of walls that are up, a couple of flowers that are out, a couple of signs that are up, but this is by no means done. It's it's tomorrow's, uh, tomorrow's problem. And that's also because there's some stuff that I want to put in here that uh, when we come to expand into this area is going to come in here. So like there's the iron claw and stuff that I want to sit in here. Uh, there is the winner of the uh, the not hyper vote, the, the uh, family thrill coaster. The winner of that is already in, and it's all down here in its loosest in its loosest sense. So, uh, yeah, I'll touch all that up later on. But this area is now done, and I like this. Like it's so horrible. It looks so roller coaster tycoon three. Uh, but that's the whole point. That's the, the actual design. That's all done deliberately. I mean, look how obtrusive it is inside here. Like, ugh, it's just red and yellow. Primary colours to the max. Just gross. <laughs> I'm so here for it. Um, but it's pizza, right? I can't do anything with the fact that the neons are slightly bigger than the, the, uh, than the, the circles and whatever, but it's fine. Like, the neons on the ceiling and whatever, it's just gross, and it's perfect for, for, this, uh, for this park. I've done quite a bit of touching up on the outside here. As it turns out, in the last update, it was quite scruffy. It needed quite a bit of, uh, like love and care but now it's in oh yes i love it and this overhang is just so disgusting it's just so there oh i love it right i absolutely absolutely love it and then we come to the arcade we come around this way to the arcade this turned out well like i've i've forgotten um that i've got all of these machines here so i think this is the dog grabber or whatever the ladybird thing I put out the front is just a mini ride. You've seen that elsewhere in the park. Uh, and then I've put the photo points, you know, the opportunities that you get uh, inside here. I've put a game stall this side. This is just a carbon copy of the one that's at the front of the park. I don't know if that's going to stay like that, but it just felt like that's what that needed. Um, and then I've put the big grabber here and uh, <laughs> grabby hands. Uh, and then you've just got the uh, arcade machines and stuff in this in this space as well. I wanted this to feel a little bit cluttered. Again, they're just monetizing as much of the space as they possibly can, you know, make the most of it. I didn't want to do too much to the car ride here uh, because that's going to come in a later episode. But what I did want to do is make a feature of this bit here because it was either going to be one massive piece of garden uh, with lots of foliage and stuff or I was like, actually, they might make this a bit of a picnic area. So that's what I've done. Path down it, uh, put a path down and then just put some picnic benches and stuff out and uh, just call it that. Like that's all the space they've got. So they would just squeeze as much as they can. And it also means you don't have picnic benches out everywhere else. So I've also tidied up the pathway here and this is a bit of a mess of textures and I, I like this. Like this bit's nice and clean and consistent but this bit here it feels like this might have been the area before this building was put in and then when they put this in they've actually put an extra bit of um, uh, flooring and stuff down and then you've just got the manor house flooring the other side and it's just a mix a mixed bag. It's a mismatch and I love it. Like absolutely love it uh, so yeah there it is um the insanity it's simple enough for now it does it does what it needs to do i just put the foliage and stuff around this is all i want to do to it uh, for now and then of course you've got the flower beds i've not put the uh the barriers down yet to stop the guests walking through that comes when i do all of the the lunar autos episode and whatever um but it's it's in there and i didn't want this to be an open area i wanted it to, to feed down two different uh, two different ways so this is uh, this is deliberately done um but yeah this is how everything looks then from the top and in fact this is how it looks in the context of the park so yes 
Yes, 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 yes. It's starting to it's starting to feel like Blackpool, but it's starting to feel different. And that's kind of what I wanted, because this is a Chacho take on a Blackpool park, right? It doesn't have to be a copy of Blackpool. And remember as well that Blackpool is really wide. When you look at Google Maps, it's actually a wide park. Like you can fit four or five coasters in a row in its width. And we can't do that here. So we're having to stay flat rather than terrain driven and I like it like it's it's become a challenge um, especially when I've started to develop this area here I've got some stuff that's coming in it's going to start feeling cramped and I think that's what we need I think that's what that's what, what the park is missing so thank you for getting to the end of the episode really really appreciate it uh, you know what to do leave a like comment subscription etc we're going to go for a ride until we speak again have a good week I will see you next week take care guys bye